Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Oh, that's right, we're going to make a tour, we're going to the border, and we'll see you later, hopefully, we'll see you later. How do you feel about the union, the border union backing out? Right well, today? they're petrified, and, and they're afraid of saying what's happening, and they, you know, they're the ones that invited me, they wanted to give me an award. And the Border Patrol, they're petrified of saying what's happening because they have a real problem here. And I'm talking about on the whole border. And uh, they invited me and then all of a sudden they were told, silencio, they want silence. So it's a problem that we will get straightened out. If I win, believe me, we'll get things straightened. Do you think it's a great danger to be here for you? Well, they say it's a great danger, but I have to do it. I love the country. There's nothing more important than what I'm doing. And I'm the one that brought up the problem of illegal immigration. And it's a big problem. It's a huge problem. You folks know it better than anybody. And you look at the crowds outside. We have big crowds. They're all screaming in favor of Trump. Everybody wants because they want the problem fixed. What do you believe? All right, that's Donald Trump just arrived at the border with Mexico. Uh, Obama put pressure on the local AFL-CIO. You know what that is, don't you? Think Jimmy Hoffa who uh, pulled the the invitation from the leader of the Republican pack, hated by the Republicans because he's saying what everyone wants to hear while they're saying nothing and nothing but a bunch of yes men and lobbyists. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Today, of course, we have to talk about the war on our borders, language, and culture, and the fact that the third world is threatening to swamp all of the West, where in 15 years we will be nothing but a third world cesspool if this keeps up. And if you think it's limited to America, you're wrong. The EU, George Soros, and the other so-called humanitarian organizations are overwhelming European nations, including Italy. Italy is being swamped with African Muslims because of leftists in the Italian government who care less that there are no jobs for the young in Italy, and they bring Africans in. But the difference between Italy and America is that in Italy, they are breaking into these uh, so-called asylum houses, and they're throwing the people out in the street. They're throwing their mattresses off the roofs, and they're telling them, go back where you came from. They're not afraid of the immigrants over there. Here we sit and we take it, and we take it, and we take it, no matter how many women are killed or raped. No matter what happens, we sit and take it. Now, yesterday, a police officer was gunned down in cold blood in the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, not by an illegal immigrant, but by a, a Mexican gang member. The cop was a hero, and he was white, by the way. Another white cop gunned down because of the loose lips, anti-police talk of Barack Obama, Eric Holder, uh, and the other one, Ayatollah, whatever his name is, that, that little cretin from Harlem, Ayatollah Al Sharpton. Because of the war on police initiated by Barack Obama and the others, cops are being killed all over America. Well, yesterday here in the Bay Area, we lost a hero. He was the head of the tactical squad for years, a hero with children. And he saw a car weaving around on the road, and he pulled him over. The guy got out and shot him. No warning. Now, here's the interesting part about that murder of the officer by the Mexican citizen, excuse me, U.S. citizen of Mexican origin. And it's an important uh, differential, by the way. Don't tell me I'm not allowed to say it. Don't you dare tell me I'm not allowed to point that out because I'll point it out three more times today before I'm through. The cop who was killed was the leader of the anti-gang task force in that area. This guy is the member of a gang. Could it be it was a setup? Could it be that they knew that this cop was on patrol and that by weaving he would pull him over and then he could execute him? We'll never know because it's in the hands of the FBI. The same FBI that took over the Solyndra case six years ago and never told us where the $500 million went. So we have an invasion of the United States of America. We have a war on our borders, language, and culture. And when I speak to you about protecting our borders, language, and culture, I, Michael Savage, speak to you as a first-generation American. My ancestors did not come over on the Mayflower. 
They came over in third-class steerage. They worked hard and died young. They learned to speak English and they learned America's ways. They were true immigrants. But the so-called immigrants of the past are not the same as the immigrants of today. I understand that the situation is different now than it was nearly 100 years ago, but the fundamentals of immigration are the same. You come as a guest and then muster up every ounce of compliance and determination you can until you earn your full-time status. This is not the immigration formula under Ayatollah Obama. His idea of immigration is to grant amnesty to those who have crossed our borders illegally, whether they committed crimes or not. I, Michael Savage, oppose amnesty for many reasons. First, we need to guarantee our national security. Not all terrorists fly into the United States in, jest, in jets. Some of them make their way to Mexico and then walk into the United States of America. This is one of the most important reasons why I oppose amnesty. We must close the borders now. This should be our highest priority. But we also have an employment issue. And 13 million Americans are receiving disability benefits who are no longer on the job rolls, which is why it looks as though uh, the unemployment rate is as low as it is, because 13 to 15 million Americans are not even applying for work anymore. And by giving jobs to non-citizens, we're not only taking away the diminishing employment opportunities that exist in the United States, we're supplying more of an excuse to those too lazy to look for work. And yes, a third, 47, and thirdly, by the way, 47% of Americans pay no income tax as all, at all. 47% of Americans pay no income tax at all. 47%. And let me ask you something else. How do you feel about the overcrowded detention centers? Are they aliens? Are they human beings? How are we going to take care of all of the world's poor? Who is going to pay for it? And that is why George Bush and George Bush's family, the Bush family, in other words, now represented by the third brother, Jeb, is so threatened by Donald Trump. Donald Trump would close the border. Donald Trump would build a wall. Donald Trump would do everything that America wants done. And that is why the Republican establishmentarians are so threatened by him and so hate him. There was a statement by Rick Perry that explained to me in, in a few words, which we'll play in a minute, why Rick Perry refused to come on the Savage Nation all these years. I sensed that he was a wobbly. I sensed he was a liberal. I sensed Rick Perry was no different than Hillary Clinton on immigration and so many other things. And now we find out that Rick Perry's advisors are the same as though it, those who advise none other than the war hero from Arizona, John McShame. Listen to Rick Perry attacking the only viable candidate on the Republican side, Donald Trump. The White House has been occupied by giants. But from time to time, it is sought by the small-minded, the divisive figures propelled by anger, appealing to the worst instincts in the human condition. A barking like carnival act that can best be described as Trumpism. You mean the Republican Party? A toxic mix of demagoguery and mean-spiritedness uh, yeah, right, and right. nonsense that will lead the Republican Party to perdition if pursued. There is no Republican Let no party. one be mistaken. Donald Trump's candidacy is a cancer on conservatism, and it must be Ooh. clearly diagnosed, excised, and discarded. I think you should be talking about John Boehner's Republican Party. It has been diagnosed by Dr. Savage. John Boehner's Republican Party has been diagnosed and excised, Mr. Perry. The only thing is it has not yet been discarded. Well, that's the opening to the show. Donald is on the border right now. We played his opening speech just after arrival at great risk to his own personal safety. He went to that hellhole of Laredo, which is the number one transit point for drugs into the United States of America, so far as, so far as we all know. He's extremely brave. Now, I know all the negative negatives. I heard them all. I've heard that he's a plant of Hillary Clinton. I, I, we've all heard it all. But we heard everything about everybody. It means nothing. I'll go on what he says and what he does rather than what you say and what you don't do. The phone number here is 855-407-282. The topic right now is Donald Trump. Here's topic number two. While you're calling my phone number to the Savage Nation, 
the number one rated show on so many stations across America in day parts, including number one on WABC in New York in the 12 plus demographic and the number one show on KSFO in San Francisco in the same demographic. I'm going to talk about charity horror stories. Have you been ripped off? I know you say, well, I haven't read about that one. I haven't heard about that one. Well, the National Children's Leukemia Foundation's Facebook page described the Brooklyn, New York organization as one of the leading groups in the battle against leukemia and cancer in children and adults. And the website said the organization's Make a Dream Come True program fulfills the wishes of young cancer patients, arranging family trips, tours, introductions to celebrities and other requests. Well, the claims were not true. The New York Attorney General's office alleged in a newly filed court petition that seeks to close this organization and recover funds raised through fraudulent representations. You want to hear where the money went? 83% of the 10 million bucks the leukemia group received from donors across the nation from 09 to 13, 83% was paid to professional fundraisers. Less than 1% of the 10 million, 57 grand, went to direct assistance for leukemia patients, according to the petition filed late Monday in Brooklyn's King County Supreme Court. You want to hear where the money went? Get ready. The leukemia group paid nearly $600,000 in salary, plus $612,000 in deferred compensation awards, and a more than $100,000 pension to Zvi Shore, Z-V-I Shore. He was identified as the founder of the Leukemia Foundation, and he ran the charity from the basement of his Brooklyn home. Did you know that? This group also transferred $655,000 to a shell organization in Israel, run by Shaw's sister, allegedly for research purposes. What a shame, what a shanda, what a disgrace upon the Jewish people that filth like this, do things like this, but I'm not finished. I'm rooting for Gen Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. I hope he finds them guilty and throws them in jail if that's what they've actually done. There's more to it. Are you ready for more of it? Because I'll give out all the names of these religious Jews in the fake leukemia business before I am through. I hold back nothing on the Savage Nation. I hold back nothing. And if someone wears a yarmulke and does a thing like this, they're lower than the lowest enemy of freedom in this country. If someone uses crippled sick children to steal money, they should be thrown in jail for 100 years and all their assets seized from here to Tel Aviv. That's what I think. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. Donald Trump, false charities. Have you been ripped off? Not by the Leukemia Foundation per se. If you want to talk about Trump or charity horror stories, charities you've given money to, only to find out most of it went to fundraisers and then again to the people who work for the charities and very little went for saving elephants or saving gorillas or saving seals, or saving whales, just greedy, 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 evil people like those who sell chopped up baby body parts because they want to buy a Lamborghini. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. How do you feel about the union, the border union backing out? Like well, they're petrified and, and they're afraid of saying what's happening. And they, you know, they're the ones that invited me. They wanted to give me an award, and the Border Patrol, they're petrified of saying what's happening because they have a real problem here. All right, we we have an invasion the of the United States of America, a rampage by illegal aliens with 611,234 crimes, 2,993 murders since Obama was elected. Let me repeat the numbers because numbers don't lie, all you humanitarian liberal, liberals. And how do you define a conservative woman? It's a liberal woman who's been molested by an illegal alien. Illegals rampage in Texas, 611,234 crimes, 2,993 murders since Ayatollah Obama was elected. And Ayatollah Obama, who was just given a pathway to a bomb to Iran, 
uh, is going to downplay his fact, the fact that he's going to increase illegals in this country unless he is stopped. And incidentally, speaking about Ayatollah Obama and his working with uh, the Shia around the globe to suppress the United States of America, uh, as well as many other nations under a new Shia domination, do you know that there was a march of 10,000 people in New York City yesterday against the nuclear deal with Iran? I could not find the story in the New York Post. It was buried somewhere. I could not find the story uh, in the New York Daily News. I could not find pictures of the crowd in New York City yesterday afternoon. 10,000 people. That is not a very small crowd. It's a very large crowd. If there were 300 gay activists screaming and yelling and throwing things, it would have been on the front of the news and the post. If it was 300 Obama supporters uh, talking about how great Obama was, it would have been blown up on CNN where all the uh, anti-American phonies seem to perpetuate their lies. And so, my friend, everything is upside down in the United States of America. The truth is a lie. The lie is a truth. Those who defend our borders are considered villains. Those who bust our borders are now turned into heroes. Cops are killed uh, on a regular basis. White cops are killed by people of color on a regular basis. Over and over again, the country is being decimated, and the media is the primary problem. The media is the primary cause. The media is the primary reason that Ayatollah Obama gets away with it. The media is the reason that illegal aliens are swarming over the border and are being turned into so-called victims by people like Anderson Blooper and the others in the media who wouldn't know an American flag if they fell all over it. And so I now open it up to you on the Savage Nation, 855-407-282. We heard the sad, despicable spewing of weakness and impotence by Rick Perry, calling Donald Trump's candidacy a cancer on conservatism. Rick Perry is pulling zero numbers in all polls. He's an unknown. Donald Trump is the leader of the Republican pack. And let me tell you something else. Most liberals will secretly vote for Donald Trump as opposed to that criminal on the other side of the aisle. Take a look at where those hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, went into that library. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. The best way to win is for me to get the nomination and run probably against Hillary. Hillary is the worst, uh, look, easily. She's the worst Secretary of State in the history of our country. She is going to be beaten, and I'm the one to beat her. And I will take jobs back. And the reason I won with the Hispanic vote, and I win all over with the Hispanic vote, because they know I'll take jobs back from China, I'll take jobs back from Japan, and every other country that's killing us. I'll bring the jobs back, and you know, the Hispanics are going to get those jobs, and they're going to love them, and they already do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the jackals are yapping in the background. Would you build a fence, Mr. Trump? He said, yeah, I'll build a fence. What would you do with the 11 million illegals already here? Well, it's really like 30 to 40 million. They're using a number that was invented seven or eight years ago, which I told you was at least three times higher seven years ago. God knows, 50 million are here illegally? Would you really know? Do you think it's as bad as I say or worse? Here, I'll make it simple for you. Obama's immigrant surge threatens to destroy America forever. WBAP, Jerry, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yeah, thank you, Doctor. Uh, I tell you, listening to you on all of this, uh, Donald has, all Donald's doing is echoing what damn near every red-blooded American is feeling right now. And especially if you're from uh, the area of the country of the Southwest, like where we are, we see this immigration thing Oh, my God, you wouldn't believe it. No, I understand Horrible. that, but you're not saying anything new, Jerry. On the board, it says you are against Trump. You said to my call screener, you believe it would be a disaster if he got the nomination. Now you're saying the opposite. So what is it actually that you believe? Hold on a second. Let me finish. I will tell you one. A guy like Trump, all he's doing is saying exactly what everybody's feeling. Great at that fact. But guys like him... Very powerful men like him, businessmen like him, they've made it a lot on their own, a lot through luck, a lot through connections. They don't generally work on consensus only. They pretty much plow a road and go for it, whether it's good, whether it's bad. 
Now, in this day and age, and all this uh, uh, politically correct society and government and things like that, all these moron government employees, all they'll do is just droop. If he ever wins, they'll just dig their heels in to do whatever they can to make it work. To not make well, wait, it- we have Obama who's dug his heels in and is ruling by fiat. He's not ruling with the consent of the opposition party. We have a de facto dictatorship right now. We need a de facto dictatorship on the other side of the aisle for 50 years to straighten out the mess that was created from Bill Clinton going forward. So I disagree with you. If what we have devolved to in this nation is no longer a nation of checks and balances and no longer a nation of ruling by consensus but ruling by decree, then I would say then Trump is even more important than ever because let him rule by decree and let him straighten the country out and let him start with a fence on the Mexican border. What would be wrong with that? He could probably order that fence built by illegals themselves. Something I pointed out many, many years ago in one of my books, let them build the wall at going labor rates. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with the wall, by the way? Why is that so offensive to liberals? did it. But the thing is, is that there was just wait. All right, thank you for the At least, the, you know, we express the other side. It seems to me by what I'm seeing, the only people who are calling the show are calling about Donald Trump. The only people calling the show care about the border issue. And that's good. I try to talk about the fake Leukemia Foundation, charity horror stories. I got no reply. That's okay. That's that's okay. It's your show. I try to talk about the Iran deal and that Obama has basically given uh, Iran the bomb. You didn't care. I try to tell you that there were side deals that were not even disclosed until now and that Iran has the right to build the, the nuclear weapon. You didn't care. You know, there's a lot going on right now. And one of the things you don't know, you don't really know it. Many of you who marched in New York City yesterday, and I'm sure many of you listened to this show, 10,000 of you to stop the deal with Iran, it's over. There's nothing you're going to do to stop it. You're not, no matter what you march, it could be a million people that won't stop what the world powers have decided. Israel has been thrown to the wolves. You heard me. They've decided that Israel is going to be collateral damage in the new world order. It will cease to exist in a certain number of decades as you know it. It will not be a Jewish state for much longer. They have decided to destroy Israel as a Jewish state. And by the way, most of your liberal friends would agree with them. They hate the Jewish state. They hate Israel itself. They want it gone. And so don't think that all your marching is going to help. It's going to change nothing. Uh, the Muslim front groups have their man in Havana, as used to be said in the 1950s. Their man in Havana is in the White House, and I don't have to repeat his name. We are in much graver trouble than you could ever imagine. And if you can't see it with your own eyes, with Obama giving Iran a nuclear weapon and hiding all the side deals he did to make sure that they hold on to that nuclear technology on the road to the bomb, you'll never ever see what he's actually done to you. If you woke up tomorrow and you saw Obama wearing a fez and standing up there and praying to Mecca, you probably would say that's okay, it's his religious right. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be alarmed. Nothing would shake the American people ever again. There's only one thing that ever shook the American people in my lifetime. Well, maybe two things. One was the Vietnam War, mainly by people who didn't want to serve. And the other thing was 9-11 because it hit us on our homeland. Other than that, the American people are indifferent sheeple. The American people don't care a whit about anything outside of their own pleasure and their own pocketbook. In that regard, they're no different than any other people that ever existed. They're not any better and they're not any worse. It's what the Romans said, the pebble in the shoe. I told you this many times, and I'll say it to you again briefly. Cato the Elder, the Roman historian, wrote, when looking back on ancient Rome, he wrote that the average Roman does not care about what the legions are doing in far distant places. They didn't care whether the legions, meaning the military, was winning or losing in Germania. All they cared about in Rome was the pebble in the shoe, meaning the cost of meat, milk, eggs, and leather. That's all that mattered to them. And as a result of that, Rome was destroyed by the invasion of the barbarians. And just as Rome was destroyed, 
by an invasion by the barbarians, America is being destroyed by an invasion as well. And if you look at the history of the fall of Rome, which we could do today a little bit if you want, the early history of the fall of Rome is an interesting and I think enlightening place to begin a discussion about what's happening to America. It's certainly not uh, an original idea of mine. Books have been written about it. But if you look at how Rome was broken in two in the Roman Empire, you'll understand that America is being broken in two right in front of your eyes. And I'll do that for you if we get around to it on the Savage Nation. 855-400-7282 and on WABC. Make your point. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Dr. Savage. Who is like the beast and who could rise against him? That would be Donald Trump. He is the only shark in the water that can bite into the slippery octopus, Obama, and still the people are blind to his dynamics. I don't care about the other things that he believes in or has done. Money he has given, not received, but given. He is a, a, an empire builder, and he has had to get into the dirty waters with a very blue state. He is showing you now, and if you look at his family, it is a reflection of who he really is. And everybody is terrified of him. And I think he definitely has what it takes. He is the, the, the proper monster necessary to take down Obama. Let's put it to you this and way. We've finally seen a white man with you-know-what. Does that work for you? Uh, finally, a white man stood up with you know what and said, go to hell to his enemies. And if you don't like it, go take a walk. And America's been waiting for him. They've been praying for him. Yes. As, as a Spanish woman, I will say, I cannot imagine a group of people that will be more destroyed by illegal immigration and this betrayal to Israel than Spanish people and African Americans. Have African Americans thought about what it feels like now to be in a country which they've been fighting to make claims for, and now they have to learn Spanish? Is anybody thinking at all? So How can the African-American community react to the invasion by uh, illegal aliens, primarily from Mexico, when Ayatollah Al Sharpton makes believe he speaks for black people when he speaks in favor of such things? Who is the voice of the, Ameri the African-American? Tell me who the voices are. Barack Obama and uh, Ayatollah Sharpton. Where are the voices of the African-American community other than them? Well, one of them spoke in New York yesterday, Colonel Allen West, but you didn't hear a word uh, that he was saying. The barbarians break the empire east and into east and west. Did you know what that was about? Do you know how it happened? And it happened in the third century of the Roman Empire. Actually, the third century of, of modern history. The, listen to this. The Roman Empire, I'm going to make it short. Make believe you're falling asleep now in history in high school. I'll take you back to high school where you can go to sleep. But you're in summer school right now because you paid no attention from September to June. And so you flunked history. And so Dr. Savage is now going to give you a five-minute history lesson on the fall of Rome and what it means to the fall of America. This is your summer school class on how the barbarians broke the ancient Roman Empire into East and West. And when I am through, you will see the comparison uh, between the breakup of the ancient Roman Empire by an invasion of barbarians and the destruction of America by the current invasion of illegal immigrants. Throughout the third century, the Roman Empire, if you remember, was already decaying socially. It was disintegrating morally, and then they faced the invasion. Does that sound like it's what's going on today? Because throughout the 21st century, the American Empire has been decaying socially and disintegrating morally, and then they were invaded by the barbarians. I can go on, and I will go on. And what happened is something you all kind of remember from high school, if you won't which is that all along the imperial frontier of Rome, which ran roughly along the Rhine and the Danube rivers, enemies were now pressing against Rome. The Franks and other German tribes had come up to the Rhine. In North Hungary were the Vandals. You heard of the name Vandals. And it was, and it was once Dacia and is now Romania, Romania, the Visigoths or West Goths were trying to invade. And in South Russia, were the East Goths or Ostrogoths. And beyond these again in the Volga region, the Alans. And now the Mongolian peoples were forcing their way towards Europe. 
The Huns were already taking tribute from the Alans and the Ostrogoths and pushing them to the west. And in Asia, the Roman frontiers were crumbling. Back under the push of a renaissance, Persia, Persia, never forget Persia, Iran of today. The new Persia turned out to be a new rival of the Roman Empire for the next three centuries. It's interesting to me that the very same elements that were in place in the third century are replaying themselves in history right now, summarized as follows. The Roman Empire decaying socially and morally faces an invasion by the barbarians. At the same time that the barbarians are pressing on the borders of Rome, Persia arises, the Iran, and it becomes, soon becomes, a successful rival of the Roman Empire for the next 300 years. Does it sound familiar? I think you can read the rest on your own. Just know this, those who do not know their history are condemned to repeat it. And the Empire and the Barbarians is a very telling story for summertime uh, reading. 855-407-282, this is Dr. Michael Savage. I'll be right back with another lesson. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. So America is being invaded not only by the southern through the southern border, but by Muslims, slowly but surely introducing Sharia law. Right now in Seattle, the communist mayor is going to introduce to the city council his desire to appease Muslims and put in Sharia loans. And one of the architects of Sharia law, a wise man from the point of view of terrorism, said that the way to get control of a nation is through its finances. And in Seattle, where no perversion is considered perversion, they are now trying to introduce Sharia lending in order to appease the Muslims in their community. We're being invaded on every side, and Obama's the perfect man for his times, which is why he was picked. The question is, what can we do about it? That's really the question. We went to the polls, we voted in 10, we voted in 14, and we got John Boehner. Now a real Republican arises, and make no mistake about it, Donald Trump is a Republican. He said so as near as today in Mexico on the border with Mexico. He said, I've been a lifelong Republican and I wanna run as a Republican. But if they play funny business with me, I'll run in a third party. Now we know what that means. If he runs a third party candidate, it's Hillary. God help this nation if that corrupt woman ever becomes president. But let's save that for another time. I hope that the Republican party doesn't listen to the weaklings like uh, those who are condemning Donald Trump for saying what most American people believe to be true at least most American conservative people who are, I consider to be the only real Americans. The others don't even belong in this country. The communists, the so-called progressives, are not by nature Americans. They're people of the world. Ask them. They'll tell you there is no America. They'll proudly tell you that they don't want an America. They will tell, tell you that they're citizens of the world. I don't consider them my fellow citizens. So the true conservatives who love this country love Donald Trump, and I hope he runs as a Republican. He will win. He'll win even Democrats know what's going on. Take a look at the state of California. Take a look at what's happening in the state, the crime, the overpopulation, the pollution. Even liberals understand that. So there we have Donald Trump. Finally, a candidate has arisen, and they're trying to rip him apart. What's interesting is that you can't find Donald Trump's name on the Fox News website. You can't find Donald Trump's name on almost any conservative website right now. I can't even find Trump on my friend Matt Drudge's website. What is going on? Is there a conspiracy to eliminate from the news the most important man of the moment? Why is Donald Trump being disappeared the way Michael Savage has been disappeared for 21 years? Is there a conspiracy that I myself don't know about? 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. What you said when you said that uh, the people across the border are rapists and murderers. No, no, no. We're talking about illegal immigration, and everybody understands it. And you know what? That's a typical case. Wait. That's a typical case of the press with misinterpretation. They take a half a sentence. They take a half a sentence. By the way, they take a half a sentence, then they take a quarter of a sentence, they put it all together. It's a typical thing. And you with Telemundo, and Telemundo should be ashamed. And I'll tell you something, what's really going to be fun? I'm right now suing Univision for $500 million. And I want to tell you, we're going to win a lot of money because of what they do. So I want to just, again, I want to thank you. No, no, you've, you're finished. You've obviously been proven. <laughs> Uh, finally, Obama has had, finally Obama has a challenger in Donald Trump. You know, I'd love to see Trump debate Barack Obama without a teleprompter. I'd like to see the real Barry from Honolulu versus the real Donald Trump. Welcome to the Savage Nation, hour number two. Of course, the biggest news of the day and of the whole campaign is Donald Trump's on the border with Mexico. And uh, let's see, he's not on... Foxnews.com, no reportage of it. Uh, the New York Daily News refuses to post any story about Donald Trump that I can see. The press is doing to him what they've done to all true conservatives for as long as I've been in the radio business, which is what the Soviet Union used to do to dissidents uh, during the era of Solzhenitsyn, which is they would ignore you and make believe you didn't exist, which was worse than imprisoning you. Because if you were imprisoned, at least you could write a book and, and have a following. So the Soviet tactics being uh, pursued right now by the children of Murdoch uh, and the others in the media is pretty apparent to me. And yet the people love Donald Trump. And the only thing I would suggest is that Donald Trump get a different hat for his appearances in the Mexican border. I think a white golf hat really doesn't work. Perhaps a cowboy hat would have worked. But nevertheless... Aside from the sartorial uh, pr uh, problems, I think that his uh, taking on the Telemundo reporter and putting the Mexican reporter in his place was just so pleasant to listen to. Suddenly, an American candidate didn't get on his hands and knees and say, please love me. Please, did I offend you some way? Did I offend Hispanic people in some way? What can I do to make up for it? I'm so sorry. Because I've had white privilege all my life. No, he didn't do that. He said, you're done. And by the way, he did it without any viciousness. He didn't do it with any anger. You could see the guy has a lot of Reagan in him, incidentally. I'll be the first but not the last to note that even though he was provoked by that uh, low-life reporter from Telemundo who said, uh, do you think all Mexicans are rapists? He says, no, 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 no. You know, you take a piece of this and a piece of that. I've had it done to me here my whole life. And yet he's handling it better than I do. I'm a little hot-headed for anything. I'm too hot-headed for anything but radio. And that's why I never ran for office. And this guy is showing me a lot, a lot of uh, dignity, showing he has a lot of dignity. So if you want to chime in on that or false charities that have screwed you, whether it be for leukemia, uh, as I pointed out, NASA's Kepler mission discovers Earth's older, bigger cousin. This is an interesting story. Did you know that they discovered a near Earth-sized planet? in a habitable zone around the sun-like star. We just learned this today. Did you know that? It's the smallest planet discovered that's orbiting in the habitable zone, according to NASA. That's amazing. So they think it's an older, bigger cousin to Earth. And it could be that all of your deceased relatives who were reincarnated are living on Kepler 452b. And uh, I, if I were you, I'd suggest you buy a, a piece of land on 452b 
any way you can, maybe using telepathy before the real estate gets out of control, as it did here on Earth. Jason on WJR, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hey, it's not that we don't care. I think that your listeners and much of uh, America is overwhelmed by issue after issue. And other than the standard protocol I've or put in place, call the senator, call the representative, how uh, you vote, call the shows. What else can we do as Americans? We're kind of getting overwhelmed here. And that's right. That's what Obama specialized. Obama has taken the Alinsky method of overwhelming the population. It's a classic tactic of the communist left, which is to hit people with one scandal after another. So by the time they're reacting to the IRS scandal, he's on to the 50th scandal. And he, notice how he doesn't stop. He's demonic. I've said this before. The man looks demonic. He has the eyes of a madman. He doesn't stop. Every day there's another blow to the guts. That's how he keeps us off base. And finally, we have someone who can stand up to him and hit back. That's Donald Trump, in my opinion. Now, this opinion of mine could change as Donald's campaign emerges. I don't know where it's going to be a month from now or a year from now. But right now, I love Donald Trump. And right now, I hope Donald Trump continues to gore the ox. That's all I can say. 855-400-7282, 855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go to the next caller. W-A-B-C. James, welcome to the program from New York City. Go ahead, please. I want to make America great again. I've heard some sanctimonious liberals claiming a certain irony in conservative support of Trump and constructing the wall with the taxpayer money. And since conservatives are usually known for their fiscal responsibility, I want to know what your viewpoint on those uh, kind of backward coin-bending liberals is. They, they basically say that, oh, well, you know, since you guys are conservatives, you guys can't be supporting the wall because that would be costing billions of dollars of taxpayer money. No, no, you, what you do is, wait, 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 let, let's be clear. I said in a book three books ago that Mexico should be paying us reparations for all the social services that their most undesirable citizens have been uh, basically illegally taking from we the American people. Would you agree that billions and billions and billions a year go to illegal aliens in services? Of course, everybody knows that's a fact. I would say that the United States should demand reparations from Mexico, and those reparations should be used in part to, to build such a wall. So it wouldn't be out of taxpayer money, it'd be from Mexican reparations. What's wrong with that idea? Exactly what Donald Trump said in the first speech. He said that he would be making them pay for that wall because he said he's great at building walls. We all know it's true. All right, all, right. all right, so you agree with the wall. I like the idea. Do you remember it was in my book, Trickle Up Poverty? Do you remember that? Did you ever get that book? I read two of your books, and that was not one of them. I read The Political Zoo, and I read the one, uh, America, uh, Liberalism is a Mental Disorder. I oh, mean, you go back ten years. Well, I'm sending you Countdown to Mecca. Thank That's you. It's my novel. I think you'll like that a lot. I really do. The publisher sent another few cases for me to give away uh, this week and uh, next. But let's get back to the border. Um, point number, I don't know the point. I have to find it. I had a, uh, a conclusion to trickle up poverty. And number two was, number one was English only. This was called a contract from America and the Savage Manifesto. Number one, English only. Number two, close the borders. Use illegal aliens to build a wall between the United States and Mexico. Hire Sheriff Joe Arpaio to oversee the project. Pay the illegals for their labor in the form of a one-time worker fee. Upon refinishing, repatriate them. Three, defend the borders. Pull our troops out of Germany and South Korea where they're doing nothing. And put them on our southern border where there's a real threat to our citizens. Four, defund and repeal Obamacare. And five, reduce the size and scope of government. With the exception of the military and defense, reduce all departments in size by 4% each year for a total reduction in size by 16% over four, uh, four years. Require government employees to speak English and to have achieved at least a high school diploma. You know that they don't have to have uh, done that now. Number seven, I'll stop right here. Oil for illegals. I say Mexico has what we want, oil, and we have something they don't want, their unemployed citizens. To offset this alien invasion, Mexico should pay one barrel of oil per month per illegal alien that sneaks into our country. Americans are also owed tens of billions of dollars in reparations from Mexico for the generous free health care, welfare, and legal care they've received for five decades. Eight, strike down the anchor babies law. Eliminate the loophole in our law 
that encourages illegal immigrants to enter the country for the purpose of having anchor babies who are U.S. citizens simply because they happen to have been born in our hospitals. Nine, export jailed illegal aliens. It was all in that book, Trickle Up Poverty, Stopping Obama's Attack on Our Borders, Economy, and Security. It was published by Harper in uh, the year 2010. I'm Michael Savage. I've been on this issue for a very long time. He is the only candidate, Trump, the only candidate who was dealing with this issue of the influx from Mexico. Now, mind you that the Mexican people are not the only illegal immigrants. I think I read a few weeks ago that a larger number are coming in from China, which I was shocked to read, and I never confirmed that. I wouldn't doubt anything that I read about illegal immigrants swarming into America. Uh, however, we have a border with Mexico, which is unsecure and it needs to be secured. And I believe that we should use the immigration policy of Mexico itself to uh, protect ourselves from Mexican immigrants, illegals. How does the Mexican government, the so-called non-racist Mexican government, deal with illegals who sneak in from Guatemala or one of the other nations on its border? Do you know how? Do they give them a gold-plated welcome? Do they offer them asylum? Do they bring them to a, uh, a, a new home with legal care and medical care? No, they don't. The Mexican government brutally treats anyone who sneaks into their country because they have common sense in Mexico. They have more care for their borders, language, and culture than we do. We do not have any care for our borders, language, and culture. And so, therefore, Trump's candidacy, wherever it may go, has already done more for the issue of uh, sanctuary cities, more for the issue of illegal immigration and the effects on our nation than all of the Republican candidates have done so far. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. Uh, we have great callers. Maybe I should take one right now. NTW Mark, before I take my break, let's have a caller. Go ahead, please. What's on your mind? It's an anti-Trump call. Do it. It's oh, okay. Hi, Dr. Savage. I just wanted to say that I, I like Donald Trump as a candidate, but I'm concerned that he said that um, Bill Clinton was the best president since Ronald Reagan. He also... Well, he said, um, maybe he said a lot of things along the way. That doesn't mean he's not making sense now. He said it uh, a couple weeks ago. W w yeah, all right. So he said it then. Maybe he liked Bill Clinton's economic policies. I don't know. Okay. He said, well, look, I, I don't... Look, we don't know... See, here's the problem. A at this point, whether Trump is a real candidate or not, we don't know. We do know he's shaking up the Republican establishment. Wouldn't you agree that's a good thing? Guess he's gone. See, I would say that just shaking up the Republican establishment is the best result so far. And he's certainly making the, the, the non-existent Democrat Party really nervous. And by the way, a party like the Democrats, they claim they want diversity, right? How come there's only one candidate with one fake candidate, the commie Bernie Sanders, while the Republicans have real diversity in 16 candidates? Which party is more diverse, the Republicans or the Democrats with no diversity whatsoever. The Democrat Party is imitating the Communist Party USA from top to bottom, where there are no candidates other than one lead candidate and one fake one. Okay, you get it? That's how the communists run things. They like a one-party system. They like a one-candidate candidacy. So in this case, the Republican Party has a diversity that is not recognized uh, by the Democrat Socialist Islamist Party, better known as the DNC. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. What you said when you said that uh, the people across the border are rapists and murderers. No, no, no. We're talking about illegal immigration. And everybody understands it. And you know what? That's a typical case. Wait. That's a typical case of the press with misinterpretation. They take a half a sentence. They take a half a sentence. By the way, they take a half a sentence and they take a quarter of a sentence. They put it all together. It's a typical thing. And... You with Telemundo, and Telemundo should be ashamed. And I'll tell you something, what's really going to be fun? 
I'm right now suing Univision for five hundred million dollars. <laughs> We're going to win a lot of money because of what they're doing. Uh, so good I want to just you. again, I want to thank you. No, no, you've, you're finished. You've obviously. Been <laughs> you see how he handled them? Listen to this. This guy is better than Reagan. I got to tell you something. Anger wouldn't have worked. The, this this Mexican reporter tried to provoke Donald with a big lie, and he wouldn't take the bait. He threw him out, basically. He waved him off like a fly, like a fly at a picnic. He just swatted him away. Didn't, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mexican reporter. Oh, I didn't really mean it. Is there some way I can do reparations? Is there something I can do to make? He didn't do that. He waved him away like the, the gnat he is. That's all. And that's what we need as a president. Can you imagine doing that with the enemies we have? I guarantee you that if Donald Trump became president, I hope he does. I hope he's real. I hope he's not a, a, a spoiler. I hope all of that. I don't really know. What do I know what the next man's doing, right? I hope he's real because I can guarantee you if he is, those bees are going to be buzzing when he's commander in chief. You're going to hear the B-2s. You're going to hear all the bees coming out of all of the Air Force uh, hangars around the world, and those bees are going to be buzzing for day upon end, and those ISIS barbarians and their women and children will be blasted back to the Stone Age. That's why I pray to God we get a real commander-in-chief, someone who's not going to be afraid of them, someone who's going to crush them like the rats and bugs that they are. That's what's needed to save this country. Right now we have an appeaser or an absolute enabler or a fellow traveler. It's hard to tell what he actually is, but we know he's not playing for this team. That's pretty clear. 855-407-282. I guess the topic that we're talking about is Trump. That's all we're talking about. Trump, 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 Trump. I can't say I know Trump. I can't say I don't know Trump. I have to disclose that I am a member of one of his clubs in Florida. I go there once a year for one night, at which time I usually see him, and he comes over to the table because he knows I'm an important media figure. And that's about it. I don't know him. He has, I haven't been in his house I haven't had a drink with him. He doesn't drink, by the way, to his credit. Did you know he doesn't drink? I guess people don't know that much about him. Donald Trump does not drink alcohol. That's very interesting. And it's a very important point that should come up, incidentally. He's all business all the time, perfectly focused and perfectly clear. Whether he is a spoiler, whether he's working with Hillary, I really can't speculate on any of that. We'll have to wait and see. But I do know that if he becomes president, being the patriot he is, those bees are going to be buzzing over Mosul. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So the third world is overrunning the first world, as we see with the border situation. Uh, Sharia law is invading democratic nations around the globe because of the cowardice of our so-called corrupt leaders. And uh, we have one man who just might be the man on the white horse we've all been waiting for. There is a control of the media like I've never seen in my life. Here's Trump, the biggest candidate, the biggest story, uh, whether you like him or not, he's the biggest story, and he's being blacklisted by the newspapers, even New York newspapers. We know one is owned by Murdoch, run by his liberal children. Okay, we understand liberals don't like Trump. We know the Daily News is a liberal newspaper, but they've got to sell the rags. They're not covering Trump. Why? Why is that? And I don't understand why Trump is not first-class news on the Drudge Report. I can't understand it. There are no pictures of Trump speaking on the border which occurred in the last few hours. It's the biggest story. And it makes me wonder who's really running things. Richard, and there's another story I really haven't gotten to because you know the whole story. We know that Kerry is a lifetime liar. We know that they negotiated away any chance to stop Iran to get a bomb or put it in, more, in, in a poor, more uh, constructive statement. John Kerry, under Barack Obama's direct advice, or actually insistence, gave Iran a pathway to a nuclear weapon. And the reason I say that today is because a secret deal came out just yesterday 
Listen very carefully to this. Please don't tune out. I know your attention span is low. I know you're bored. I know you don't want to hear anymore. I know you've had all you can take. I know you're ready to turn the dial. I know you're ready to go to music. I know you want to hear sports. I know you're getting nervous. I know, I know it. I just know you're ready to hit that button. Hold on another minute. How can I prove to you that the United States is in a conspiracy with the mullahs of Iran, a terrorist nation, to develop a nuclear weapon? Because the United States signed a side agreement along with the EU guaranteeing that they would protect Iran's nuclear facilities from any attack at any time. Did you know that? In other words, not only did we give Iran a pathway to the bomb, we also guaranteed Iran that we would protect their pathway to the bomb. Your intelligence agencies, your military is actually now on the side of the terrorist nation of Iran under Ayatollah Obama. What more do I need to say to you? Does Obama have to come out in a fez with a prayer rug on the White House lawn and pray to Allah for you to understand what he's doing? What has to happen? What do you need a television show to show you what he's doing? It doesn't really matter to me what his religion is. I could care less. His religion is probably that of Karl Marx. God knows what his religion is. His religion is that of, of vehement hatred for the nation and all of the West. That's his true religion. And the end of the day, that's not even his religion. His religion is that Machia uh, Machiavellian, Machiavellian religion. His religion is of himself, by himself, and for himself. And if it has to mean uh, destroying his own nation, he would do that just to stay on top of the world. I'll give you an example of how deep the conspiracy runs. 10,000 people were in Times Square, New York City yesterday afternoon. Go find a picture of it in one of the major New York dailies. I can't find it. I searched for it all morning. And so <clears throat> we did find, well, you're not going to believe where we found it. We found it on Al Jazeera. I was working with my webmaster early this morning, and I said, can't find one on Fox, can't find picture on uh, the Post, can't find it in Daily News. So Art Moore, who does the web posting, sent me a picture from, of all places, Al Jazeera, showing the protesters in New York City demanding Congress kill Iran nuclear deal. And then on a further search, buried in the back of the New York Post, was a picture or a little story. Thousands protest Iran nuke deal in Times Square. And what did the Post do? They did a close-up showing 30 people instead of showing the 10,000 people. That's Murdoch's illiberal children at their worst. Richard on WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, Michael. Lovely to speak to you. I was at the rally yesterday in Times Square, and your official count from the police department at one stage was 10,000 to 12,000. They went to 12,000 official, and I guarantee you there was 15,000 uh, peaceful demonstrators with great signs. One sign said, Chuck Schumer is a no Schumer, which I was told later on meant uh, he's not a guard or something like that. That's a Jewish word. Yes, no, I know what it means. Chuck Schumer is stabbing the Jewish people in the back. Chuck Schumer should never have been trusted. Chuck Schumer is one of the worst people in the history of the Jewish people for what he is doing to this country and to Israel. And for the Jews to have thought Schumer was their man is unbelievable to me. How could they have ever trusted a liberal Democrat like him when he didn't even show up at the rally? How is that possible? All Chuck Schumer is doing now, in my opinion, is negotiating with Barack Obama directly uh, for what he can get out of the deal to shaft Israel. That's what I see. Well, let's Thank you for the call. I mean, what more? I, I said it like it is. Schumer will not answer anybody, was not at the Stop by Rand Now rally, which filled the blocks between 42nd and 38th Street and had about 12,000 people. And Charles Schumer has yet to take a position on the agreement with Iran. Crowd was chanting, where is Chuck killed his deal? Where is Chuck killed his deal? Where is Chuck killed his deal? And he won't give an opinion. And Schumer gave an opinion, said, I've read the agreement, and I'm seeking answers to many questions I have before I make a decision. I'm going to speak at length with experts on both sides. In other words, he is hiding. Schumer emerged from the meeting at about 6 p.m. last night and told reporters it's a serious issue, and I'm studying it carefully. Really? You're studying it carefully? The administration under Obama is giving hundreds of billions of dollars knowing some of it will go to crimes against humanity and to aiding and abetting terrorism, and Schumer doesn't know that. Schumer also ignored a question for the New York Post about the 10 questions that the paper's front page said he must answer about the deal. 
Many people were at the rally yesterday. Uh, many big people were at the rally yesterday, and yet it didn't make it to many, many newspapers today. So we've got problems on every front, and you, the people, deserve to know so you can at least know what's going on. I know you can't affect anything. I know that. I know many of you say, what's the point of even listening to talk radio? All it does is get me upset. Well, okay, so it's like saying you don't want to know anything. So don't listen to talk radio. I looked at the ratings around the country in different, dem uh, different uh, not demographics, Let's say music radio, sports radio, talk radio, okay? There's news, all news, then there's talk radio, and then there's sports radio, and then there's music. Music is killing everybody. Did you know that? Music is the number one uh, generator of listeners to radio. The people want pure entertainment. They don't even want to know what's going on. And if they do, they turn on the news for a few minutes and turn it off. I mean, there's a slow and steady audience for talk radio across the board, but it's not growing by any means. It's been shrinking over the last few years. Now, why do you suppose that is? It's not because people are more ignorant. It's not because people are less caring. I think it's because people can only take so much bad news and they can only take so much agitation. And they figure, look, I know the border's being overrun. I know the third world is invading America. I know that Obama's probably playing for the other side. We know that any decision he makes is against the interests of America. They get that by now. I'm talking about talk radio listeners, okay? But they say, what more do I need to know? Basically, that's the lexicon of reality. So every once in a while, they tune in, and that's the end of it. That's one man's opinion. It's my interpretation of what's going on in the media landscape. So what can I say? Let's take some calls. John on WMAL asks a very important question. John, what's your question? Uh, yeah, it was uh, relevant to Trump. I didn't know if you were still talking about him. I don't care. Whatever the question is, just ask it. 10 -4. all right. So if he were to commit the way you said the bees would be buzzing, b 2 slow ISIS, women and children, the way that they're integrated in the state, it wouldn't just be ISIS you'd be taken out. And I'm, I understand that. Would you still be content if he were to take hold? I don't know what his military standpoint is, but if he committed to that, would you be at all concerned about the backlash between what other countries would see that? You're asking a very important moral question, and it's the same question that probably was asked of Harry Truman uh, before he authorized the launch of the B-29s with atomic bombs against Japan. And why do you think Harry Truman did that, knowing that innocent Japanese men, women, and children would be killed in order to stop the war machine? Why do you suppose he, he decided that he would have to do that? Why? A bold move to put a stop to a nasty mess. Because the Japanese and a Japanese invasion would have cost one million American troops. And Truman decided that it's better that they die than our boys die. That's Truman's decision. Do we have men like Harry Truman today? I don't know. I don't know what Trump's decision would be. And we know that uh, uh, ISIS is so devious that they're training little children of theirs to, to, to have machine guns to execute people and kill. You remember we heard of the Nazi youth, the Hitler youth rather, you know about them, right? They were trained from the earliest age to worship the swastika and to swear allegiance to Hitler. Well, we now have the ISIS youth core, which is identical to the, to the Hitler youth. They are going to be a poison on the planet for all the years ahead of us. So you're telling me when you kill a child like that, you're killing a decent human being? What are you killing when you do that? You think they could ever be rehabilitated? Yeah, it's, that, I could care less about them so much as the people that aren't involved in it that might be you know, taken out. From all right, now you're asking a Hobson's Choice question. And it's one I've thought about late into the night, which is if they were to bomb Mosul, for example where there are millions of people, many of whom hate ISIS, uh, what are you going to do about that? How do you prevent the massive murder of innocent people in a bombing campaign? Well, I don't think you can, so you have to start with their training camps. We certainly could be doing more than we're doing now. Let's start with a little few baby steps. Why did Obama not bomb the ISIS military victory parade about seven weeks ago after they took Mosul when there was a line of a half mile long of their Toyota trucks. Why did Obama not launch a, a strike then? There, were no, there was no collateral damage possible. It was all military men in their trucks. Why didn't he take them out with their trucks? I, I like that question, and I'd like to think that Trump would focus on things like that as opposed to just an outright explosion. Uh, I guess he would. He certainly wouldn't be indiscriminate in bombing, throwing bombs around the, the planet. 
but I know that it would scare them to their core to realize someone's going to finally come after them and give them what, they, what they've been giving the world in spades. And that's what we're talking about, is fight fire with fire. Otherwise, we're sitting here waiting for the next, quote, lone wolf attack. There are no lone wolves. They are not lone wolves. They're all uh, members and soldiers of Allah. They're soldiers of Allah. They're all answering to ISIS, whether directly or indirectly, whether on the Internet or in their own minds. They're here. They're near. They're everywhere. And our FBI is paralyzed. Our DHS is paralyzed. And we, the people, are forced to sit here waiting to defend ourselves. Do you know what the government did today? Did you read that our, you know that our troops are, are not armed on bases. You know Clinton did that. We know that. So militia members have volunteered at many bases to sit with arms at recruiting centers, rather, to protect the military. Listen to how twisted the country's become under Barry from Honolulu. Armed citizens are protecting military recruitment centers. Guess what, what, what happened today? Your government, Barry's government, ordered an investigation of all militia members who are protecting recruiting centers. Barry's directive through the DOD is that all soldiers must immediately report any armed citizens who are protecting recruiting centers. Tell me which side Barry is playing on. Tell me which side the Department of Defense is playing on. Tell me which side the DOD is on, DHS is on, the CIA is on, the FBI is on, because I can't tell anymore. And so we have problems, and finally a man like Trump arises. Let's bring it back to Trump. Trump has arisen. Trump is saying everything that most Americans believe to be important and true. And Trump would certainly have not permitted this deal with Iran. Certainly Trump, if he became president, would reimpose sanctions and stop them in their tracks on a race to a nuclear weapon. And uh, that's another reason to vote for Donald Trump. That's if he gets that far and if he is not shafted or, God forbid, assassinated along the way. I'm sorry I had to say that, but we all fear it. He went to the Lions then today, to the border of Mexico, to Laredo, the number one, uh, the number one border town where drugs come in. Do you have any idea? I looked at the pictures of him there and I said, what, does he have an army around him? I mean, who's protecting him? He landed on his own 740, 757, I think. And where's his army to protect him? I don't know. Who is protecting Trump? I don't know. Yet he, uh, he's taking the, he has the courage to do this. 855-400-7282. Jake on WABC, fire away. We're all listening. Go ahead. Yeah, oh, you said something before that uh, really hit home. You said people, the sh people listening to talk radio are shrinking and shrinking because they're afraid to hear the sad truth. I think I could say the same about myself. And I actually stopped listening to talk radio up until Donald Trump came about. It was like a glimpse of light in, talk, in, uh, in politics these days. Right. I mean, so, but wait, but why do you listen to talk radio just to hear Donald Trump? He's not even on my show right now. No, I don't want to hear Donald Trump. I mean, I want to hear Donald Trump, but that's not why I listen to talk radio. I listen to talk radio because I like to hear the truth. But unfortunately, the truth lately has become too painful to listen to. All right. Well, that's what I was saying. It's exactly what I said. It's painful for us in the business as well. I wake up and look at it. I feel like a cancer doctor, and I'm opening up the patient every day, looking at the x-rays, and I'm saying the patient's dead. The, the, the disease has spread so far, I don't even want to look inside the body anymore. I couldn't have agreed with you more, Michael. I'm telling you, Jake, it's getting to me. It is. I'll be right back to tell you more about it right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Do you think it's a great danger to be here for you? Well, they say it's a great danger, but I have to do it. I love the country. There's nothing more important than what I'm doing. And right, Trump I'm the one threatens who up an the independent problem. run on the sidelines of his visit to the border with Mexico uh, hours ago. He made a very big visit to the border in order to draw attention to the threat of illegal immigration in the United States. He's also threatening the Republican Party. He's telling him, if you d mistreat me, if you do to me what you've done to talk radio hosts all these years, 
I'm talking now what he said to the Republican Party, basically. If you do to me what you've done to talk radio all these years, dismiss all those in talk radio as uh, renegade fools, I will run as an independent if the Republican Party won't welcome me, he said. And that, of course, will guarantee the election of Hillary Clinton. He'll destroy the Republican Party rather than let them dismiss him. All right, it's his, his, his right. He's a free citizen. He's got the money to do it. He's got the power to do it. And I hope the idiots like Rick Perry and the others come to their senses before it's just too late. I'm Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I think I'll win the Hispanic vote. You know, I have thousands of Mexicans and Hispanics, and I think when it comes right down, I I don't know if you saw the poll, but uh, they just did a big poll in Nevada, the state of Nevada, and I'm way ahead, and more importantly, as far as I'm concerned, I'm way, way ahead with the Hispanics, well into the 30s, which, uh, and I think second is like 11. So uh, I, I have a great relationship. All right, relationship. that's Donald Trump Over at the, the board. I told you this the other day. I'm not, you know, it's one thing in talk radio. We all tell you how smart we are, and we said it first, and we played tapes to show we're smarter than the other guy. Look, let, let's put all of that behind us. But I did say the other day that I guarantee you that Trump will poll higher amongst Hispanics than you could ever imagine. Because the Hispanic people who are here, I, I have a pair of eyes. I see what's going on. They work hard. They uh, want to buy a house. They're married. Children at a very early age. They raise their family. They stay home. They raise their children. I'm not blind. And they want a man who's going to help them keep their money. That's Donald Trump. They don't want some cockamamie communist coming here. They ran from communism, socialism. They can smell it from a mile away. So they see a guy like Trump. Poor people actually want a rich man for president more than the average person, the the averagely middle class person. Let's put it that way. Poor people respect rich people. Never mind what Bernie Sanders said about the income inequality. No one believes that crap. No one believes that garbage except university perverts. So a guy like Trump appeals to the poor more than you may imagine. I saw it from from a while. I, I myself, when I was poor, I know this from my own life. I'm an immigrant son. It's not a badge of honor. I wish I was a rich man's son. Well, maybe not. I probably would have been a bum all my life, but I wasn't. I resented having to ride the subway to work. I resented that I had to go to a a local college rather than to a so-called out-of-town college because my father wouldn't pay for it. I was a kid who had no money. I had to make it all on my own. My father told me that from the earliest age. He said, I don't have the money to send you to college. You're going to have to go to a city college and work. So I went to a city college and worked. Did it make me a better man? I don't know, probably. But don't think I didn't want to be a rich man's son. I used to say in my 20s, God, I wish my father had a factory or something. And I could just kind of coast the rest of my life. But God didn't want that to be. So here I am, all these decades later. And I'm saying that Trump has wide appeal, far wider than you may imagine. Never mind the Lilliputians in the media. Don't pay any attention to those solenterates. You know, oh, did you say all the Mexican? They didn't say that. You know, and his comment about McCain, all right, so it was upsetting. But that doesn't mean the military wouldn't be a better military under Trump. Are you kidding me? Are you telling me that the military wouldn't be a better military under Donald Trump than it would be under Hillary Clinton? Are you kidding me? How could you military people have have made such an, a mistake that because of one remark about John McCain, one embarrassing remark and one bad remark how could you throw in with hillary clinton how could you possibly do that you know the other republicans are no better than hillary clinton when it comes to the military and and when it comes to defending our national security so i I, i'm appealing to the veterans groups out there to let go of their vendetta against donald trump momentarily Uh, that's what i'd like to appeal to them and and never forget that trump has actually created jobs never forget that He's created real jobs. 
and he's worked all of his life. I love the media says that he's a, a rich boy who inherited the money. Not true. I'm not his greatest defender. I grew up on the other side of Union Turnpike in New York. I told you this before. I'll tell it to you again. Donald Trump lived on the other side of Union Turnpike in the beautiful homes near Cunningham Park. I lived on this side of Union Turnpike with the attached row houses. Think of British movies in the 1950s. Think of black and white movies with attached brick houses, 20 by 50. You know, upstairs, downstairs, one and a half little bathrooms. I, to me, it was a paradise because we had come from a little... Uh, a little confined apartment in, in, in the South Bronx. So that was paradise to me. I didn't know I lived in a small house. It was big enough for me. But Trump was a rich boy. His father owned, uh, his father built, never mind owned, his father built middle-class apartment blocks in Queens and Brooklyn. So what did Trump do with the money? Did he just blow it on, uh, on, on a good time? Did he become a party boy and a drunk or a druggie? No, he didn't. He took his father's fortune and he built it into something a thousand times larger. That's what he did with his father's wealth. It's an important story. You have to respect it. And, and what I'm saying is he knows how to create jobs. Now, is he a serious contender? All I can say is I hope so. Will he stay the course? All I can say is I hope so. Uh, is he a spoiler? All I can say is I hope not. Is he really working with Hillary Clinton? All I can say is I pray not. That's all we can do. I'm not on the inside. I don't know. The only advice I would give him is get, you know, get rid of the white hat. Don't ever appear in a baseball hat again. Whatever you do, Donald, we don't like the bill. The big bill. The, the baseball hat for the average man doesn't work. He would have been better off wearing a cowboy hat. It doesn't suit him. A cowboy hat would have worked better on the Mexican border anyway. But uh, that, that's the sartorial commentary means nothing to you. He's ahead of everybody in the, in the uh, Republican Party, which is why they hate him and fear him and uh, I, I think I have to play again the bitterness of Rick Perry you know over the years I've tried to get Rick Perry on my producers try to get him on over the years he would never ever come on the show and I figured out why because he was being advised by the same anti-americans that advised John McCain the very same campaign advisors who ran McCain's campaign obviously are working for Rick Perry that's why he hates Trump now let's go to a few callers okay how's that want to do that Perry on WMAL in Washington. Fire away! You're on the Savage Nation. Yeah, we as a, as a as a Muslim, as a, a very spiritual um, young man at 53, I believe that we as a country have to, as a world really, but focus on America, have to really come to grips with His glory, Him, eye on Him. Yes, you gotta prepare your military to defend. We understand that. Focus. We have to look at ourselves because he's judging all nations right now in america oh, wait, who is he i don't know who he is uh, the same god of christian the same god of Abraham, Moses, Jesus. all right okay i get it the, the one monotheistic god i got it okay you're saying that our morality our lack of morality is a big problem in america well i couldn't agree with you more perry i have said this and i know that you as a moderate practitioner of islam moderate politically i assume and i'm not here to give you a loyalty oath it's not my place I have said over and over again that the antipathy in the Muslim world towards America is not based so much on our military policies as it is upon the collapse of our morality. Isn't that what you're saying? Yeah, well, yes, that's what I'm saying. And also, it was brilliant comparison. You talked about the Roman Empire and Persia. You're spot on when you draw these comparisons. I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, you're brilliant in a lot of ways. We're on the same sheet of music. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you heard it. You know, I did that two and a half hours ago, Perry. I'm sorry, your name is Perry, right? I did it two and a half hours ago. I talked about <clears throat> the fall of the Roman Empire when the barbarians broke into the empire and it broke it in two. And at the same time, Persia rose and remained a viable uh, a competitor of Rome for the next 300 years. It's exactly what history is showing us right now. It's because Rome had collapsed morally that it then disintegrated socially and it then disintegrated uh, um, militarily. That's exactly what's happening here. God's hand of judgment was on Rome, I mean, the empire as well. And You're right. You are right. And God knows I'm not sitting here on a high horse saying I'm better than the next man. I'm as, I'm as tainted as the next man in this country today. I'm not sitting here saying I'm better than the next man. We are all fallen creatures. And we need a leader who's going to lift us up. Now, this is an interesting question. You're raising a very sensitive question. I'm trumpeting Trump. 
but Trump has been married three or four times, hasn't he? Does that? Do you think that's going to work against him with women? I'm sorry you're breaking up, Perry. I'd love to keep you on the line. I think women may not like Trump because of the fact that he's been married three or four times, by the way. You know, always marrying a younger woman. And women don't like that behavior for obvious, for obvious reasons. So, uh, you know, that's an issue no one's brought up. I'm surprised that uh, Anderson Cooper didn't bring that up. You know, Mr. Moral there, Anderson Cooper, a real prize of humanity. I'm surprised he didn't start throwing around a, a moral questions like, isn't it true you've been married four times? How is that for morale? Blah, blah, blah. I expect that tomorrow. They'll try anything they can get. The, the ones who have no guts to ask Obama a single question suddenly found a, a, a shred of, um, of courage. Now they're, oh, Trump. They have the guts to ask Trump a question. 855-400-7282. Big news out there. Very, very big news. I think that Trump is a real leader. I think Trump can absolutely make America great again. I know that uh, he supports Israel, for those of you who care. You know, you may not know that. You know, he's not mentioning a lot of things about his personal life that I happen to know that maybe I shouldn't mention, that I've picked up over the years. I don't think it's important right now. Let him mention it when it's right. He's a vehement supporter of the military. He always has been. He would make America's military. Do you know that Obama's cutting the military to a level that makes it almost functionless? Do you know that? Do you have any idea what he's doing to us? He's decapitating us militarily. Trump would reverse that. Hillary would continue what, what uh, 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 President Obama is doing. So on every level, if Trump is real and he gets there, I think he'd make for a great president. And whether he uh, can hold the woman vote because of the marriage thing, I don't know. I really don't know. That's a very, very sensitive issue. And uh, I'm not one to judge whether women will continuously continue to uh, would continue to support him if they uh, were forced to focus on that by the by the left wing uh, immoralists. You know, I don't really know. OK, my friends, this is very, very good, but it's early, early, early in the campaign, very early in the campaign. This is only the summer before the summer that really matters. You know that. I don't know how a man his age at 69 can take this kind of pressure, to be honest with you. If I were advising him, I would tell him to back off right now for two weeks. Get out of here. Don't come back. Don't be seen until after Labor Day. Wave after Mexico. Wave and disappear from the stage. Don't burn out in the race too early. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he knows that, and that's wor that's worrisome as well. He should back off after this Mexico appearance. He should just enter stage right exit stage right and stay away until after labor they come back with another big splash go to israel go to the wailing wall with netanyahu after labor day and if i have donald trump on this show in the next week or so if i do i'm going to recommend that he go to israel on the wailing wall with netanyahu who is a hundred times more popular popular than ayatollah obama i'm michael savage i'll be right back Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Ayatollah Obama has put out a missive saying he plans more executive orders on immigration. You heard me. He just said he's going to put out more executive orders to flood America with more third worlders. Proposed rule expands number of illegal aliens allowed to stay in the country. It came out minutes before the show started on freebeacon.com by Elizabeth Harrington. It's on the top of the Drudge Report. Ayatollah Obama is moving forward with plans to expand the waiver program that will allow additional illegal aliens to remain in the country rather than apply for legal status from abroad. The Department of Homeland and Security under Jed Johnson the radical leftist lawyer from Wall Street issued a proposed rule today. Well, I, I don't want to read it to you, but the waiver is going to go so far beyond dreamers and parents and children. You're not going to believe the other categories of illegals beyond those with citizens, spouses and parents that Ayatollah Obama is going to permit to soil our nation. Are you ready for them? Such aliens will include family sponsored immigrants, employment based immigrants. That means that Facebook, Microsoft, and others can get all of the Indians that they want for 50 cents on the dollar. So he's paying back uh, the visits to Silicon Valley. 
certain special immigrants, I don't know who they'd be, maybe drug dealers, who pay enough money. Wait, it gets better. And diversity visa program selectees. That means no white men. What does a diversity visa program mean? Anyone but a white man. Anyone but a European. Together with their derivative spouses and children. That will allow the illegal aliens that he's picking to stay in the nation while they wait visas and blah, 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 blah. No opposition from the Republicans, none. Can you believe this? Can you believe what he's doing before the election and why he's doing it? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing this to the United States of America? There's one reason. There's only one reason for it. Well, there's actually a few reasons. One is psychological, one is political, uh, and one is financial. Let's start with the financial reasons that he's doubling down on amnesty in the spite of the, n the number of people killed by illegal aliens. Do I have to name them? You heard the heartbreaking testimony yesterday before Congress of people whose children have been mutilated and murdered by illegal aliens. Didn't make it to the, uh, to the, uh, to the television. He doubles down. Why? Why is he in such a rush to change the demographics of America? from a white majority to something else. L let's lay it on the line. I know many of you don't even want to look at this. You're very uncomfortable with it because you've been so successfully brainwashed that you won't even analyze what he's actually doing. If he's taking in almost no European immigrants, and I mean European of Caucasian background, I'll make it very, very clear, but instead wanting to change the demographics of almost every city and state that he can get his hands on before leaving office. Why is he doing it? Well, the question is pregnant with the answer. You don't even have to say why. Well, 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 yeah, I mean, he'd be a genius to figure it out. It's in order to make sure, look, I figured this out, I swear to you. It's been so clear to me what he's doing, why he's doing it. The man's animosity and malevolence to America is so overwhelming that it oozes out of everything he says. But why is he doing it? Isn't he happy with gay marriage? Isn't he happy with everything else he's done? No. No, that's just the beginning for him. There's a mania here, a, a, a mania that is hard to comprehend that anyone would be on such a war path against the nation that gave him so much. I try to warn, it, warn you about it and stop the coming civil war. And in uh, October, my biggest and last nonfiction book will be out entitled Government Zero. It's on Amazon. It's not ready to be sold. I'm mentioning it to you because this is where it's, it's all there, Government Zero. Government, government Zero, Government Zero, Government Zero, Government Zero. Now, why do I call it Government Zero? Do you remember the Ebola epidemic of last year? Remember there was a patient zero who started the whole epidemic? Do you remember that? Remember that? One man, one person? Well, that's why I call it government zero. One man is destroying America. One man is this bulldozer wrecking everything that was built up before him as fast as he can. Page by illegal aliens with 611,234 crimes, 2,993 murders since Obama was elected. Let me repeat the numbers because numbers don't lie. All you humanitarian liberals. Illegals rampage in Texas. 611,234 crimes, 2,993 murders since Ayatollah Obama was elected. And Ayatollah Obama, who was just given a pathway to a bomb to Iran, uh, is going to downplay the fact that he's going to increase illegals in this country unless he is stopped. And incidentally, speaking about Ayatollah Obama and his working with uh, the Shia, around the globe to suppress the United States of America uh, as well as many other nations under a new Shia domination. Do you know that there was a march of 10,000 people in New York City yesterday against the nuclear deal with Iran? I could not find the story in the New York Post. It was buried somewhere. I could not find the story 
uh, in the New York Daily News. I could not find pictures of the crowd in New York City yesterday afternoon. 10,000 people. That is not a very small crowd. It's a very large crowd. If there were 300 gay activists screaming and yelling and throwing things, it would have been on the front of the news and the post. If it was 300 Obama supporters uh, talking about how great Obama was, it would have been blown up on CNN where all the uh, anti-American phonies seem to perpetuate their lies. And so, my friend, everything is upside down in the United States of America. The truth is a lie. The lie is a truth. Those who defend our borders are considered villains. Those who bust our borders are now turned into heroes. Cops are killed uh, on a regular basis. White cops are killed by people of color on a regular basis. Over and over again, the country is being decimated, and the media is the primary problem. The media is the primary cause. The media is the primary reason that Ayatollah Obama gets away with it. The media is the reason that illegal aliens are swarming over the border and are being turned into so-called victims by people like Anderson Blooper and the others in the media who wouldn't know an American flag if they fell all over it. So we have an invasion of the United States of America. We have a war on our borders, language, and culture. And when I speak to you about protecting our borders, language, and culture, I, Michael Savage, speak to you as a first-generation American. My ancestors did not come over on the Mayflower. They came over in third-class steerage. They worked hard and died young. They learned to speak English, and they learned America's ways. They were true immigrants. But the so-called immigrants of the past are not the same as the immigrants of today. I understand that the situation is different now than it was nearly 100 years ago, but the fundamentals of immigration are the same. You come as a guest and then muster up every ounce of compliance and determination you can until you earn your full-time status. This is not the immigration formula under Ayatollah Obama. His idea of immigration is to grant amnesty to those who have crossed our borders illegally, whether they committed crimes or not. I, Michael Savage, oppose amnesty for many reasons. First, we need to guarantee our national security. Not all terrorists fly into the United States in, jest, in jets. Some of them make their way to Mexico and then walk into the United States of America. This is one of the most important reasons why I oppose amnesty. We must close the borders now. This should be our highest priority. But we also have an employment issue. And 13 million Americans are receiving disability benefits who are no longer on the job rolls, which is why it looks as though uh, the unemployment rate is as low as it is. 13 to 15 million Americans are not even applying for work anymore. And by giving jobs to non-citizens, we're not only taking away the diminishing employment opportunities that exist in the United States, we're supplying more of an excuse to those too lazy to look for work. And yes, a third, 47, and thirdly, by the way, 47% of Americans pay no income tax at all. 47% of Americans pay no income tax at all. 47%. And let me ask you something else. How do you feel about the overcrowded detention centers? Are they aliens? Are they human beings? How are we going to take care of all of the world's poor? Who is going to pay for it? And that is why George Bush and George Bush's family, the Bush family, in other words, now represented by the third brother, uh, Jeb, is so threatened by Donald Trump. Donald Trump would close the border. Donald Trump would build a wall. Donald Trump would do everything that America wants done. And that is why the Republican establishmentarians are so threatened by him and so hate him. Now, I know all the negative negatives. I heard them all. I've heard that he's a plant of Hillary Clinton. I, I, we've all heard it all. But we heard everything about everybody. It means nothing. I'll go on what he says and what he does rather than what you say and what you don't do. Now, why do I say Barack Obama is acting like the devil? This is not a matter of uh, opinion anymore. Anyone who has an IQ above that of Bill Maher or that other guy on television with a fake name who... Uh, donates to the White House and then gets him on the show. One a million dollars. A TV a TV uh, jester offers him a million dollars. Then he has him on the show to spew, to spin his lies. I forget the other guy's name. I really do. The one from Kew Gardens, John Stuitsky, whatever his name is. I am convinced that these are the men. I'm going to say something that's so offensive that I hope it reaches them. I hope one of their in-laws hears it. 
I hope one of John Stewart's in-laws who hates him tells him what I'm about to say. You know, they have families. So you figure someone in the family hates him. The same with Bill Maher. Someone in the family may hate him. So, But what I'm about to say, write it down and tell him. In uh, the concentration camps, it's a sensitive topic. They used fellow Jews to beat people into the gas chambers. Did you know that? And they were lo mainly lawyers. I'm not making this up. They gave them truncheons, and they were the ones, the Judenrats, who beat people into, the, into submission if they wouldn't comply. There was another class of wonderful human being, and uh, Jerry Lewis once did such a movie and then withdrew the movie. It was too painful for him. It was about Jewish, a Jewish comedian in the 30s who was forced by the Nazis to entertain Jewish children as they were led into the gas chamber to their deaths. And they told him either you're going to perform and entertain the children or you're, we're going to kill you and your whole family. And it tore the uh, comedian up. That's who these comedians remind me of. Did you hear what I just said? It's a profound statement. They know better. They're not that stoned. They're not that sick. Let me give you a few examples. Thousands of violent felons about to be released in November under new sentencing guidelines by Barack Obama. And these will include inmates with violent crimes uh, on their records, including assault, firearms, and even murder. So Chairman Bob Goodlatte and Senate Commander Chairman Chuck Grassley sent a letter to so-called Attorney General Loretta Lynch. I call her so-called because she was picked from the New York court system by none other than the street radical Al Sharpton to be Attorney General. To give you some idea of how far this company is, country has fallen, they pick a woman of her low ilk, Loretta Lynch. Al Sharpton picked her, asking for more information about these inmates, including a history of offenses for each offender projected release date. Meanwhile, the sanctuary cities go marching on. Sanctuary cities go marching on. Jerry Brown, concerned about so-called global warming, saying, saying that not only all the science is in, but the world's going to come to an end. Actually come to an end. We're going to be extinct. Unless we understand that the $97 billion high-speed rail is completed. He gave driver's licenses to illegals. He created transgender bathrooms. He has uh, put a check mark next to sanctuary cities. And now he has a special message from God that the world will come to an end unless we give him another trillion dollars for the global warming scam. He climbed out of his private jet to give us this talk on the Savage Nation. We know the problem. Yes, there's uncertainties, but we don't even know how far we've gone or if we've gone over the edge. There are tipping points, feedback uh -huh. loops. This is not some linear set of problems that we can predict. Uh, we have to take uh, measures against an uncertain future, right, which right, right. may well be something no one ever wants. We are talking about extinction. We're talking about uh, climate regimes that has not, have not been seen for tens of millions of years. We're not there yet, but we're on our way. And there's an element of irreversibility that requires that we imagine down the road, in the future, and then react. Wow. A lot of big words there for all of the television uh, comedians. I mean, Bill Maher will have to look some of those up. He's have to have someone translate some of those words that uh, Jerry Brown just gave out. How about the many lies paving the way to Obama's legacy by Robert Ehrlich, Jr., National Review? Here's what he said about the Iranian threat to Israel. The danger from Iran is grave. It is real, and my goal will be to eliminate this threat. I will always keep the threat of military action on the table to defend our security and our ally Israel. That was then. This is now. On health care, he said, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan. On capitalism, Obama said, if you've got a business, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. On religious freedom, let's honor the conscience of those who disagree with abortion and draft a sensible conscience clause and make sure well, you get the picture. So Obama's lying through his teeth about the deal with Iran, as is Kerry. The woman who negotiated the deal is a lifetime left-wing fanatic anti-American. And I pointed her out last week. She's the hidden voice. She's the one who negotiated many, many other anti-American treaties. She's never seen, but she did it. So they're lying to you and saying that if Iran violates the agreement, the sanctions kick back in place. So they gave Iran, listen to this, 24 days notice now. Obama the liar. In this secret deal with Iran, with the mullahs, 
They're going to get 24 days notice when the inspectors are coming. No American inspectors are, uh, inspectors are allowed in, in Iran. That's number two. The nuclear agreement signed by the liars allows Iran to deny inspectors access to suspect sites for up to 24 days. So you ask yourself, well, really, what can Iran hide in 24 days? Kerry says nothing. Kerry says you can't hide anything. You can't hide a nuke. Well, here they are. Most weaponization activity, centrifuge manufacturing, centrifuge components, uranium stockpiles, missile components, incriminating documentation, computers, hard drives. What else can Iran hide in 24 days, Mr. Obama? Computer modeling to simulate nuclear explosive devices. Mr. Obama, they can also hide experiments with explosive lenses. Uh, they can hide work on firing systems all in 24 days. John Kerry is just Al Sharpton with a better suit. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. The biggest news of the day and of the whole campaign is Donald Trump's on the border with Mexico. And uh, let's see, he's not on foxnews.com no reportage of it uh, the new york daily news refuses to post any story about donald trump that i can see the press is doing to him what they've done to all true conservatives for as long as i've been in the radio business which is what the soviet union used to do to dissidents uh during the era of solzhenitsyn which is they would ignore you and make believe you didn't exist which was worse than imprisoning you because if you were imprisoned at least you could write a book and, and have a following so the soviet tactics being uh, pursued right now by the children of Merck uh, and the others in the media is pretty apparent to me and yet the people love Donald Trump and the only thing I would suggest is that Donald Trump get a different hat for his appearances in the Mexican border I think a white golf hat really doesn't work perhaps a cowboy hat would have worked but nevertheless aside from the sartorial uh, pr uh, problems I think that his uh, taking on the Telemundo reporter and putting the Mexican reporter in his place was just so pleasant to listen to suddenly an American candidate didn't get on his hands and knees and say please love me please did I offend you some way did I offend Hispanic people in some way what can I do to make up for it I'm so sorry because I've had white privilege all my life. No, he didn't do that. He said, you're done. And by the way, did it without any viciousness. He didn't do it with any anger. You could see the guy has a lot of Reagan in him, incidentally. I'll be the first but not the last to note that even though he was provoked by that uh, low-life reporter from Telemundo who said, do you think all Mexicans are rapists? He says, no, 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 no. You know, take a piece of this and a piece of that. I've had it done to me here my whole life. And yet he's handling it better than I do. I'm a little hot-headed for anything. I'm too hot-headed for anything but radio, and that's why I never ran for office. And this guy is showing me a lot, a lot of uh, dignity, showing he has a lot of dignity. You know, there's a lot going on right now, and one of the things you don't know, many of you who marched in New York City yesterday, and I'm sure many of you listened to this show, 10,000 of you to stop the deal with Iran, it's over. There's nothing you're going to do to stop it. No matter what you march, it could be a million people that won't stop what the world powers have decided. Israel has been thrown to the wolves. You heard me. They've decided that Israel is going to be collateral damage in the new world order. It will cease to exist in a certain number of decades as you know it. It will not be a Jewish state for much longer. They have decided to destroy Israel as a Jewish state. And by the way, most of your liberal friends would agree with them. They hate the Jewish state. They hate Israel itself. They want it gone. And so don't think that all your marching is going to help. It's going to change nothing. The Muslim front groups have their man in Havana, as used to be said in the 1950s. Their man in Havana is in the White House, and I don't have to repeat his name. We are in much graver trouble than you could ever imagine. And if you can't see it with your own eyes, with Obama giving Iran a nuclear weapon and hiding all the side deals he did to make sure that they hold on to that nuclear technology on the road to the bomb, you'll never ever see what he's actually done to you. If you woke up tomorrow and you saw Obama wearing a fez and standing up there and praying to Mecca, you probably would say that's okay, it's his religious right. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be alarmed. 
nothing would shake the American people ever again. There's only one thing that ever shook the American people in my lifetime. Well, maybe two things. One was the Vietnam War, mainly by people who didn't want to serve. And the other thing was 9-11 because it hit us on our homeland. Other than that, the American people are indifferent sheeple. The American people don't care a whit about anything outside of their own pleasure and their own pocketbook. In regard, they're no different than any other people that ever existed. They're not any better and they're not any worse. It's what the Romans said, the pebble in the shoe. I told you this many times and I'll say it to you again briefly. Cato the Elder, the Roman historian, wrote, when looking back on ancient Rome, he wrote that the average Roman does not care about what the legions are doing in far distant places. They didn't care whether the legions, meaning the military, was winning or losing in Germania. All they cared about in Rome was the pebble in the shoe, meaning the cost of meat, milk, eggs, and leather. That's all that mattered to them.